Have you ever seen those patterns that repeat forever? You can never really tell where one image ends and the other one starts. Well, today let's show you a super easy way that you can make one for yourself. So these are actually surprisingly easy to make. So let's get into this. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to make a canvas and we'll make it 400 by 400 and that'll make sense in a second. So now with our canvas, we basically need to make our pattern. So let's make this as simple as possible. We'll start off with a simple star. We just make it. So I'm going to hold control and shift to make it a nice even star. And we'll just color it black for now. Now with this star and with any shape that you do make that's going to repeat, it's always worth making it into a symbol. So before we do anything, we're going to head up to our symbols panel here, which if you don't have it, head over to view, studio and symbols. And with it selected, we're just going to hit create. So you can see our little symbol there. So next, if we head down to our transform panel here, you can see the top left corner of these nine squares are selected. And that means the very top left corner of your object is the center. And what we actually want to do is we want to make sure the center is the actual center. So it just makes it a little bit easier going forwards. So if we select that middle square, you'll see that some of these numbers will change from one to the other. And what we basically want to do is we're going to align this right in the very top left corner, which we can easily do by making the X pixels as zero and the Y pixels as zero. And now we know the center of that image is directly in that top left corner. There's no question about it. You could do it by eye and following the guidelines. So you could grab it and kind of align it how you think. I've just aligned it based on the guidelines. But as you can see down here now, we're not actually in the center of this Y position here. We want to make sure that we're zero and zero to make sure it is perfect. Easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this. So hit Control and J. We've got another. And because it's a symbol, it's now created another symbol. And now what we're going to do is we want it to be in the very, very top right corner. So we've got our X axis. I'm going to change this now to 400. So now you can see it's moved over to the right hand side. We duplicate this again. And now we want it in the bottom right corner. Now to make things even easier, what we can do is select both of these and hold control, click and drag. If we hold shift, it'll keep it locked to that guideline and drag it all the way down to the bottom. We can drag it down to somewhere like there. And then while they're both selected, if we go to the Y axis and now put 400, they'll snap down to the bottom. And if we want to check that, so the very, very top left should be zero, zero. Top right should be 400, zero. Bottom left should be zero and then 400, which it isn't. And then bottom right should be 400 and 400. So you want to make sure that these numbers are exact. Otherwise, your pattern will not match up correctly. Cool. So we got our first thing lined up. Just to make this really simple, we'll grab this one and we'll put it in between these two stars. So if we duplicate this and now seeing as we don't want it all the way to the end, we want it halfway. Half of 400 is 200. And if you've got your ruler open, which if you don't, you can hit control and R to hide and show your rulers. It literally gives you the guideline of where center is, so 200. So we're gonna move this across the X axis to 200, pop that in. We'll duplicate this one and we'll bring it all the way down and make sure it hits 400. So we've got 200 and 400, perfect. And then we'll actually grab three of these and we'll just duplicate them into the middle like that. We've got a grid of three by three stars, all aligned perfectly, pixel perfect. So that is gonna be our repeating pattern. Now, the reason I said to make it a symbol is so that if we want to make a change to one of these stars, let's say we want to change the color, they will all change at the same time. So if we want to add any effects or anything else to the design, it's now a lot easier because we've made it a symbol. So we'll leave it that color for now and we'll leave the background transparent for now as well. Perfect. Now that we've got our image, what we want to do is we want to head up to file export and we're going to export this image as a PNG. So we're going to export it and I'm just going to save it on the desktop because why not? Right now we're going to use it. So we're going to open a new document, just make it 1920 by 1080. Doesn't matter what size it is. This is just to show you what we're going to do now. And we're just going to make a simple shape. So let's just make a giant rectangle. Now we're going to attach our repeated pattern into this rectangle. The way we do that, if we head over to the fill tool and then rather than selecting a fill under the type, we're going to go down to bitmap is going to then ask you to find your image. So we're going to pick this untitled because I like labeling things untitled. Hit open and you'll see a few of your stars go up. And with these little handles, we can now make this smaller and give it a twist as well if we need to. And you can see that our star pattern can get repeated multiple times like that. And what's great with this is that we can rotate it if we want, or we can make them zoom in or zoom out to get more of them. You can make very simple backgrounds for banners and things like that using this repeated pattern. But yeah, that's how we basically do it. And no matter how far we zoom in or out, you can see that it just repeats forever and ever and ever. So 
I mean, that's pretty simple. It's just stars. Let's make it a bit more complicated. But here's one I made earlier. We've got our stars in the corners and you can see that again, each one, if we go over to our transform, you can see it's marked as zero, zero, the bottom one, zero, 400, bottom right one, 400 by 400, and then the top one. 400 by zero. Now you'll see that the other images that we've got or the other letters or shapes are corresponding to either side. So if we want it to repeat, for example, this letter A that we've got on the left here, wherever it is, and we could put this higher or lower, wherever it is, we need it to repeat exactly on the other side, which is the distance of the canvas. So this canvas being 400 by 400, if we have this letter A here, we're going to duplicate it and move it 400 pixels to the other side. So as you can see here, we've got our A selected and our X axis is zero and our Y axis is 200. If we select the other A, you can see the X axis is now 400 and the Y axis is 200. So they're the same height, but 400 pixels across. Similarly, we've got this X here, which it's along the X axis, 255.9 doesn't matter but we're going to duplicate that and we're going to bring it all the way to the other side and make the y-axis 400 so now that that will repeat in exactly the same fashion and then we've got some other shapes and things anything in the center that isn't cut off by the edge will get repeated in the pattern but you won't need to fiddle with it in any way at all so now that we've got this we'll do the exact same thing file and export we're going to export it and this time we'll call it png2 but now if we head over to file and new create ourselves a new document make ourselves a nice big rectangle head over to the fill tool go down to type hit bitmap and hit untitled 2 you'll now see We've got our new one and you can see how that now repeats pretty nicely. And what's really good is that it doesn't matter the shape either. So for example, we could use this cloud tool. It doesn't matter the shape. We head over to the fill tool, go to type, go to bitmap, select our bitmap, open it up and you'll see it repeats very nicely. So now if we wanted to, we can add a stroke to this, make the stroke bigger and have something like that. So this is really good for things like t-shirt designs where you can mock up the actual outline of the t-shirt and then make your repeating pattern and just make it a bitmap, put it on the t-shirt and there you go. And then you can scale it up or down depending on what you like. So yeah, a lot easier than you thought. And that's it. So using these techniques, you can make more and more intricate designs that will repeat forever. If you learned something from this video or you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you're new for more videos like this. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as best as I can. If you haven't already, make sure you check out this video here for more cool affinity designer tips. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.